Believe it or not, there's a good chance that receiving feedback during your session, like through a velocity measurement device, or from your good old buddy at the gym, could be improving your performance and your gains. Here's why. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf today, the training partner you all wish you had. The pencil neck you could make fun of between sets, but also your favorite PhD in sports science, able to make you make gains faster. Let me break down some science on how feedback could help you make more gains. Believe it or not, we have quite a few studies looking at the impact of receiving feedback between repetitions or between sets and how that impacts your performance both acutely in the immediate moment within that session on that next rep, in that next set, and also chronically how it improves your gains in strength, for example. Sports scientists sometimes study some pretty random stuff, and this is one of those things. Specifically, as it relates to lifting and strength gains and so forth, this area of research was recently summarized by the unfortunately named Jonathan Weekly. Besides having the most unfortunate name of all time being named Jonathan and Week as his last name, here's what they found. They analyzed a total of 20 studies. They differentiated between different kinds of feedback to see whether certain kinds of feedback could be more effective than others. To give you an idea what feedback even means, feedback is external information regarding the performance or the result of a task being performed. So essentially, for example, it could be how fast in meters per second did the barbell move on average during the lifting phase on a squat. For example, on rep one, it might have moved at 0.5 meters per second. What about on rep two? 0.44, for example. One form of feedback, therefore, could be a velocity measurement device with a screen in front of you showing you exactly how fast you lifted the weight on this rep. And that would be called average concentric velocity or mean propulsive velocity. There's a bunch of acronyms for it, but that's essentially what one form of feedback boils down to. Alternatively, some devices can give you power output on a given rep. Importantly, these things are relatively rare in most gyms. And if you want to purchase a velocity measurement device, that will often set you back several thousand dollars. Most people, it's not really a reality and it's probably not worth investing several thousand dollars into. Other feedback includes video feedback, like watching your setback between sets, verbal encouragement, verbal cues, like coaching cues, like how to move, verbal feedback on how fast the bar moved. There were a variety of types of feedback being studied within this meta-analysis. Now, let me break down what the results said into two sections. The results acutely, as far as how it increases your performance in the moment in that session, and then how it may or may not improve your performance chronically, like make you stronger over time compared to not receiving feedback. In these studies, they often looked at exercises like the barbell squat, the leg extension, the leg curl, the bench press, and so forth. Compared to not receiving any feedback acutely within a given session, receiving feedback did increase performance with an effect size of about 0.6, which would be categorized as a moderate effect size. Importantly, both receiving verbal feedback from another human, for example, and receiving visual feedback, like for example, reading the bar velocity on a measurement device in front of you, both increased performance compared to not receiving any feedback. However, when conducting a moderator analysis, receiving visual feedback, like for example, that bar speed that you can visually see in front of you, was superior to receiving verbal feedback. And so where possible, if you have a velocity measurement device, for example, and you have an iPad that you can connect it to, having that iPad set up in front of you in the rack when you're squatting or benching or deadlifting or anything is likely beneficial in improving your performance. It can help you put more effort into each rep, lift the bar more explosively, potentially get more reps on a given set. And so potentially receiving feedback during a session, both verbally and in terms of performance like your bar speed is beneficial. And one area where this is commonly done and probably helps with performance is at a powerlifting meet. When people are shouting at you to focus on things like bar speed, like, oh, explode, explode, speed, 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 or up, 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 up. Those cues might be beneficial for performance in terms of getting feedback on how you're doing. In general, there is also a whole body of research comparing more external cues to more internal cues. External cues would be things like get the weight up or explode at the hole or what have you, things that are focusing on the outcome of the movement. Whereas internal cues would be things like make sure you extend your legs, things that are focused on the bodily movement of different joints, different muscle groups, different limbs that you have. Internal cues about your body's movement and external cues about the outcome of the movement you're performing, like being explosive. And specifically, based on a meta-analysis by Gurdjieff and colleagues from 2022, external cues do consistently seem to lead to better performance than internal cues. They found a substantial improvement in muscle endurance outcomes, aka how many reps you're able to perform with a given weight across multiple sets, basically what you would do in the context of hypertrophy training, 
when using external cues over internal cues in movements like the push-up, the deadlift, the squat, the bench, and so forth. And so when it comes to feedback and generally just things that you focus on in the gym that your training buddy is telling you or that you're mentally focusing on during a set, I think external cues where you're focusing on being explosive, for example, or just power velocity or a technical cue are generally the way to go for improving your muscle endurance performance and therefore likely increasing the stimulus received by the muscle. Importantly, we only have one study looking at the effect of these different types of cues on hypertrophy. I have a whole video on that, I'll link up here, but basically at this point, if I had to give some advice on what sort of cue to use, what sort of focus to use while lifting, I would say focus on the outcome of the movement. Focus on being explosive during the concentric, controlling the eccentric, focus more so on the movement quality than on the muscle. Back to the meta-analysis by Jonathan Weekly though. They also looked at chronic outcomes, or essentially how strong that people get over time when receiving feedback versus not receiving any feedback. First, when it came to improving your jump performance, essentially how high you can jump, there was a non-significant but small effect size in favor of receiving feedback over not receiving any feedback. When it came to improving your sprint times, there was a moderate effect size in favor of receiving feedback versus not receiving feedback. Importantly, for pretty much all chronic adaptations or how much better you get at something over time, the improvements did lean in favor of receiving feedback versus not receiving any feedback. And so it just seems like a good strategy altogether, at least when it comes to performance outcomes within the gym. Unfortunately, for strength specifically, there weren't quite enough findings. So instead, let me point you to what the authors had to say. Practitioners are often interested in additional physical qualities, like strength, but due to the breadth of outcomes reported, it was not possible to ascertain the effect of feedback on these outcomes. It should be noted that despite the inability to meta-analyze certain outcomes, findings from systematic review can help guide practitioners in whether feedback would enhance adaptations in non-meta-analyzed outcomes. For example, 3 rep max strength in the back squat was assessed by both Weekly et al. and Bandurke et al., with both studies demonstrating that the feedback groups had greater improvements than their corresponding non-feedback groups. And broadly speaking, this just points to their overall takeaway, which is that chronic adaptations, like strength, sprinting, jumping, are also benefited by having feedback as opposed to no feedback. Before I move into the takeaways for this video, let me give you a few additional conclusions from this paper. First, more frequent feedback, like for example, between each repetition as opposed to between each set is likely beneficial. So you have a training partner who's providing you with verbal feedback or even telling you the bar velocity on each rep, that is likely preferable to just watching back your set between sets. It seems like receiving feedback is more like an acute boost in your strength. If for example, you do one set with feedback and then you don't get feedback for the next set, that next set is going to have worse performance than the first set, all else being equal. So receiving feedback during one set doesn't result in a permanent improvement. It's kind of like putting on clothes. While you put on the clothes and you're wearing them, you get warm up, but then when you take them off, you're colder again. Generally, as I mentioned earlier, visual feedback is preferable over verbal feedback, and generally feedback appears to increase motivation to do the task, competitiveness, and perceived effort put into actually training. Feedback likely improves several qualities like jumping, sprinting, strength outcomes, although the evidence is a bit more variable in certain outcomes. Let's say you don't have a training partner or any device that can really provide you with feedback. Well, if nothing else, recording your set and re-watching it between sets is likely still going to be slightly beneficial if only as far as improving technique and fine-tuning it over time. Let me give you a few takeaways from this research and how to apply it within your training. First, focusing on external cues like being forceful or explosive during your movement or on technical elements or outcomes of the movement is going to be superior to not doing anything or having an internal focus when it comes to improving acutely, strength, and chronically even strength and performance in general. For hypertrophy, it's not super clear yet, but I would still opt towards an external cue, like for example, being explosive during the concentric or improving some aspect of the technique of the movement. Getting a training partner to remind you to be explosive, focus on those external cues, provide verbal feedback, and generally remind you to use good technique is likely beneficial. If you have access to it, or you have the funds to purchase one, a velocity measurement device can be great. Visual feedback is generally preferable over just verbal feedback. Rewatching a set between sets is likely one of the best ways to use your time that you have available between sets, especially if your technique isn't 100% there yet. Getting a training partner that can provide you with feedback between sets may improve your performance acutely when you're lifting, like you might notice that your best lifts and your PRs are consistently hit when other people are around and encouraging you, and also improve your adaptations chronically. And as a final broad takeaway, try and implement forms of feedback however you can into your training. It is likely beneficial. That is the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like the video, comment, subscribe. If you'd like me to provide feedback to you and become your coach potentially, check out the link above and we could enter a coaching relationship. Lots of feedback. If you aren't already subscribed, 
consider subscribing. I know about 50% of you aren't subscribed at the time of watching this, so please do consider subscribing. In the meantime, have a fantastic day. Milo Wolf, Wolf Coaching, we're out.